Hello, Pastor Deborah here, and this is Agape Love. Love is here. This is one of the many video sections of the ministry of Pastor Deborah, helping people the Lord's way. Please enjoy the video, and we look forward to you coming again. Pastor Deborah hopes you enjoy hearing about how she has learned. How to help people the Lord's way and have her many wonderful spiritual experiences throughout many, many years of helping people. Welcome again to a video of Agape Love, Love is Here Ministries. This is Pastor Deb. Love always and forever. Hello again, Pastor Deborah here. And this is another kingdom of darkness teaching yes hello everybody we are here in the garden today and many of you are in your dreams some of you hear me knocking i'm at your door of your heart you can hear me you may not be able to see me but i'm inviting you come come into the class can you hear the bells ringing it's class time. It's school time. Come. And we're going to learn. Yes, sit with everybody. Yes, you can sit with the animals. They'll sit in your lap. They love to hear this teaching. And where are you? We're in the Garden of Eden. Some people believe it's not a real place. It is a presence, and it is. But it was always here on planet Earth. But it's been hidden away by a flaming sword and protected by a fiery cherubim. It's where we started from, where our ancestor, a young man named Adam, began. But we're back in it now. Pastor Deborah found the opening. She had to obtain a lot of knowledge. She had to pass a lot of tests. She had to have a, that's me, me, had to have a seeking heart. And then the entrance was open to me. I'm the shepherd of it. Oh, there are other shepherds, that's for sure, because it's a big place. But welcome, welcome. Today, we're going to teach more out of the patterns of the kingdom of heaven that will help us to understand the kingdom of darkness. Yes, the kingdom of darkness is outside of the garden. It is here on planet Earth right now, today, as you're hearing this and as you're sitting here. Well, out there, you're sitting here, but we are not in it at this moment. But it's sort of, there's a saying, you may be in this world, that's the kingdom of darkness, and the natural world, but you, the real you, the spirit you, could be in the kingdom of darkness. But like Pastor Deborah, a lot of us, we're in it, but we're not of it. Pastor Deborah, before she was four years old, was of it. And then she was taken out of it, transformed when she believed in this young man called Christ Jesus. Yes, that one. Yes, I had to believe that he was the son, the offspring of the only one true God. And he was sent to earth in the form of a human being. He was a spiritual creature inside dirt. And he was down here to do a special, special mission for his father. He was to teach us about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness. He was to renew our thinking, turn it from what it had become into religion and cultures and traditions and back to the kingdom of heaven. And then he would also teach us about the kingdom of darkness, which was here on planet Earth and about its king called Satan. And this young man Pastor Deborah believed in from the time she was three or four. I had to believe that he loved us. He was teaching us 
helping us to renew our thinking back to what it originally had been. Oh, he didn't like the new mind, the new thoughts. Maybe you call them modern thoughts. He didn't want us to think that way. Or in a way of religion. Or in a way of denominations. But in the way with the mind that he had and that believed in and knew about the kingdom of heaven. And then you would understand the kingdom of darkness. So he came. He was with us for about 33 years. He taught and he did miracles. He was demonstrating this kingdom of heaven for us. So we could contrast it to our religions that could not heal people. He was demonstrating the kingdom of heaven's power and authority against the kingdom of darkness. And then he had to go to a cross. Yes. He had to pay a painful price, a death. Because it was the only way to get Pastor Deborah and everybody else back to our original state. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Back in connection with the Heavenly Father as he was. There was a price that Adam, mankind, should have paid. But he said, I don't want them to pay it. And so the father asked his son, Christ, his offspring, would you pay it? Would you go to a cross and take all the sin, all my judgment and wrath? Would you pay the price, even though you didn't do this, so that I could be reconnected back to all of humanity? And I could bring back to them the kingdom of heaven inside of them. A kingdom of love, joy, and peace inside the Holy Spirit. And I could reconnect them back to me and the kingdom. Would you pay that price? He was asked that before the foundations of the world were even created. Before there was anything. Before there was even a spirit world. Inside of this Loving God and Father, the great I Am. He asked his own self, could he pay the price for us? And he said, yes, I would. And he would make a way for us to come back to him. He knew we were going to get lost and bad things were going to happen to us. Yes, to all of you out there, yes, yes. But he made a way back for us. The way from a spiritual death of icky corruption of the flesh where the soul all of its appetites and desires and the physical body was ruling this spirit he said the only way to heal all of this was something had to die pay the price of the punishment of the law of the kingdom of heaven because the law was if you sin you die if you disobey, you die. It was a spiritual separation, a physical death, a death of all purposes and plans, a death of your identity. And this young man, this offspring of God himself, his own words said, I'll go. I'll pay the price. So he did. It wasn't nice. It wasn't easy. But there's not many gods who have children who will do that for all of humanity. Because you see, a spirit doesn't have any human blood. And what actually sinned on us was our soul, our helpmate, that which was flesh and blood, which was decreed by Adam when he saw this helpmate come out of himself. He declared it was just flesh and blood. And that is what did the initial sin. That was the connection out to a fruit, that was talking to a serpent, which was really Satan, of the kingdom of darkness. And through the physical body and the flesh, the helpmate, the spirit, man, that was inside the dirt, which was called Adam, sinned. So all three parts of us had to be punished. The law of the kingdom of heaven had to be fulfilled. Judgment was set. 
Somebody had to pay the price. So this young man, Christ Jesus, said, I'll go. I'll lay on the grenade for them. I'll give up my life. I love them as you love them. I'll pay the price for them. Pastor Deborah learned that early. Now, and this is what he is working out in these teachings to help you understand all of this. It's very deep stuff. How could somebody love you, ah, you, that much that they would take your place and die for you so you could live? Mm -hmm. That's what he did. Now, that's a, another deep teaching, but right now, today, we're going to continue on with the kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of darkness was set up after the pattern of the kingdom of heaven. And its king and all of its different components it had. So by studying both the kingdom of heaven, we learn about the kingdom of darkness. And we learn how it was uh, copied. It is the best. The kingdom of heaven was the top pattern, the best of the best. That the king of the kingdom of darkness, Satan, which means adversary of God, took the pattern because he was in the kingdom of heaven. He knew the precious, glorious, holiest, the best pattern for having a kingdom, territory, servants, which were slaves to him. So he took that pattern and he created his own kingdom of darkness. Darkness actually means ignorance. And by the time this got started, him and all of his servants, that we call them demonic spirits, their wisdom and knowledge that they had had become so perverted and twisted, corrupted, it didn't look like much of the old kingdom of heaven at all. They had bits and pieces of it. They had forgotten. The, they know the glory of it. They know the authority and the power of the kingdom of heaven. And they know it was to be down here on planet earth, ruling and reigning through the spirit, through the soul and the physical body of all humanity. They knew that. They knew what does God, the great I am, Jehovah, what he desired. And they said, if that's what he wants, then we have to have it. So this is, I believe, part 11. And we had just gotten into about the presence of God and where mankind had started. And this was the beginning. And I'm going to talk about that because if you don't understand that, that pattern of having the presence of God in your life, in your spirit, in the atmosphere around the world, you know, this system of government, then you won't understand the kingdom's presence on earth. So we're going to begin part 11. Right now, as you know, Pastor Deborah, if you do, we always open up with prayer. And a welcome to everybody. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today from wherever you have drawn us. For you tell us that your heart draws all people to you to hear your words of spirit and life. For you are a spirit and you are speaking to their spirits, some through their souls, some in their dreams. They're having visions of you. Some of it through words, through friends, through circumstances. You are reaching out to the fatherless, the wounded, the lost, the depressed. Those who are serving in the kingdom of darkness, you're reaching. Your love has traveled far. Father, now open their ears that they may hear your words of truth that can set them free. Open their blinded spiritual eyes that they may see you and they may love you. Let their minds be opened 
receiving your words, understanding what you're saying, and taking in and rooting within themselves in belief and understanding your truth. Help us, Father. Help me to teach. You are free to come through me and talk to them. Help them to see you through your words, through your very presence in Pastor Deborah, that they may believe in you. This is your work, Father. You sent your word, your Son, Christ Jesus, to talk to us. You talked through prophets. You had it written down. This is your work of your heart, of your desires, to reach out, to speak to, to connect with and communicate to all humanity out in the realm of the Spirit, to their spirits, to help their spirits. Father, we thank you for this teaching today and that you will be with us and guiding Pastor Deborah. And you will be here in your presence and our hearts and our spirits We'll be able to hear you, see you, feel you, experience you as you intend us to. In the name of your Son, Christ Jesus, the living Word, amen. All right, let's get started. We were in a section of my big book called The Kingdom of Darkness, and we had just started about the beginnings of humanity. You cannot understand where you are today, who you are, what is going on in the world. Why are people the way they are? Why do we have all these religions and faiths? If you don't go back to the beginning. It's the best way I can explain it to you is if you had a river that started off in the high mountains running down, running down. And it comes out to the land and starts spreading out in tributaries and streams and eventually gets out to the oceans. If you just look at the ocean, you don't know where all the water came from. If you start looking in nations, we'll use the River Niger or the Amazon. And it gets out, it has tributaries all spread out. But that doesn't tell us Or the River Nile that doesn't tell us where the water is coming from. Where was the beginning? How far away is it? Where is the very spot that the water came from? Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're going sort of upriver. We're going up and back and back to the beginning. And then we're going to relate where we are today and how we're in such a mess. And I know each and every one of you got messes in your life. You're messed up in here. Some of you are in the kingdom of darkness. And you are living by ignorance, spiritual ignorance. And your soul thinks all this stuff is foolishness. And anybody who believes in another God is foolishness. You have, you're filled with hate and anger, and you're not, you've got wounds, and you are just still a victim of circumstances and things that happen to you, and you can't see past that. So my job is to help us go back. So let's begin. In part 10, we had finished up with the saying, God's presence was the life-sustaining environment for the spirit of man and that was in the garden in the delight and the pleasure of God where he smiled on us and he could hug us and touch us that was the living presence that was the environment the optimal conditions that the spirit of humanity was to be living in connected to. So we're going to go a little bit more into that today about this presence of God. So you can see how Satan saw it, knew how it was vital 
for the life sustaining spirit to be sustained. It must be in a presence of this powerful spirit called God. So Satan knew that, and he knows that if you got outside of, kicked out, disconnected from that heavenly Father's heavenly kingdom of heaven presence, you would start dying, shriveling up, like taking a plant out of water. Eventually it would become brown and just crippled and stuff. So he knew that because that is what had happened to him. He was in this powerful presence. Let's do a review of the king of the kingdom of darkness, this Satan, this adversary of God, and how he had lived and the presence of God that we're going to talk about. He had been in it. And let's see what happened to him when on the deep inside of him he became jealous and coveting of being the king of the kingdom of heaven. And it changed him, transformed him on the inside from being perfect and beautiful, full of knowledge and wisdom and glory and righteousness to one of evil and wicked, coveting and hating and jealous, lusting after things and even selling it, called merchandising his traffic, trafficking in his merchandise. So we learn about him and his image and his kingdom that he set up because he could not get the real one the one that he really wanted. But let's listen to him. I'm going to read a few uh, scriptures to you, and it'll tell you why the presence of this holy, righteous God is so beautiful, and it was the environment and the presence of all living things spiritually that needed to be in it, to be sustained by, this presence. So let's listen, okay? And we have to look, do this over and over. You have to keep knowing where even Satan, who means the adversary of God, started. We always have to go back to the beginnings to see how far both him, how far the kingdom of darkness is off how it is a parallel but not equal kingdom, and how it contrasts to the kingdom of heaven. We need to see the beauty of this presence, of this God, this king, of the kingdom of heaven. And Satan, who was a different creature at the time he was in it, let's listen to about it. It goes Satan was originally called Lucifer. Now, we've talked about this in another part. Lucifer meant light bearer. It means you are to bear, carry, reflect light. Didn't mean that the light was yours, but it was to come through you, come to you, shine out. You were to carry it reflect it out of yourself. That's what light. Now, light also means like truth and knowledge. This presence. Light also means words, songs, truth, wisdom, understanding. Light meant knowledge. So this Lucifer, this light bearer, he was a powerful, powerful Cherubim, there were three of them. One was named Michael. He was a warring high cherubim. Gabriel, he was the one that did a lot of communications. And then there was Lucifer. Lucifer was one of the three that had one third of all of the angels of the kingdom of heaven under him. He was a mighty leader and ruler. He had authority. He had other angels underneath of him. He was to make sure 
as Lucifer, that he would speak out or light would come like through a prism. White light comes into a prison and it shines out in colors. He was His body was also sort of stones. And if I've been in caves, Pastor Deborah has, where you can hit the stone and it will make a tone. And if you hit different ones, you can play music. His body was a musical instrument. As the light shined through it, the light had particles in it. It would uh, hit the stones of his covering, and he would sing, make, he would be a voice. This was his beginning. So let's continue. Lucifer was an archangel. One that covers. His job was to put out his wings. He was a fiery, fiery serpent. Excuse me, cherubim. That's what cherubim means, fiery, shining, glorious, bright. He was to cover, which means protect, shepherd, guard, keep anything that was of sin or defilement. He was to keep it away from the throne, from the kingdom. He was always out, making sure nothing that was not pure and holy and righteous could come into the presence of this holy God. That was his job. He was the son of the morning, which meant he was the son, the offspring of the first age. The morning means the first dawn, the beginning. So he was there in the beginning. He was there in the first ages. Of course, in the spirit world, there's no time, but it did have a beginning. If you'll go to my videos called Story Time, I haven't quite finished them yet, you will hear about this one God who was by himself for a long time. He had thoughts and imaginations and he was one, and there was nothing else. And he got lonely, so to speak. So he decided to breathe out, to give birth to what had been inside of him. He had been thinking about creating, imagining. Because in his word, he tells us, if you think in your heart certain things, you have created it, and it's done. So he now was going to give birth to those thoughts. Because he didn't like being alone. He was a creator God. That means he creates. So he breathed out, out of himself, and the spirit realm began. And in that time, I don't know if he did it in stages, if he created his throne room, the land, the territory first, or everything just popped out. Typically, if you look in the natural, you will see creation work this way. Everything starts as a seed, small, you can't see it, and then over time, and with the right presence, environment, atmosphere, things grow. So, this Lucifer was a created being of the king of the kingdom of heaven, of the first age, the first outbreathing, one of the probably one of the first spiritual creatures that was created. And then, as creation continued, his job was to protect the presence of the glory, the holiness, the righteousness of this God from anything out there. You might sort of look at it if you study planet Earth. We have an environment around it that protects us from the solar wind coming in. There's a magnetic force around the Earth. So when the sun shoots off its solar flares and even comets come or meteorites, it's burned up in the atmosphere because if the sun's rays just didn't have that filter to go through, it'd burn up planet Earth. So Lucifer was probably something like that. 
because God's glory and power was so powerful. It had to, many things had to be, even in the spirit world, probably had to be protected from its full radiant, like the sun. You can't get close to the sun. It burns everything up. So that was sort of Lucifer's job. And it goes on to say this is how he was on the day he was created. He was created by this king of the kingdom of heaven to be in that presence of the king and this glory. In Ezekiel 28, 11 through 18, we're told a little bit more. Now, Ezekiel was a prophet in the Old Testament of God. God was having problems down here on planet Earth. The flood had occurred. He started over. And mankind was continuing to uh, prosper. They were growing after he had to separate them all and scatter them from the Tower of Babel because they just wouldn't leave and go and feel back in the Earth. So this uh, old prophet uh, testament has this book in it called Ezekiel, who was a prophet, a man of God. So God would talk to him. It wasn't inside of him yet. And he wanted this Ezekiel to speak to, prophesy, talk to a human king on planet Earth, that behind him, in him, was this Lucifer dude. Because Satan, by now, at this time, he was, was forming, had formed the kingdom of darkness. He had taken the pattern. Now I want you to listen. We are going to hear God himself speak to this Satan in the kingdom of darkness that's in a human spirit. And this pattern that Satan used came right from the garden where he got inside a dirt body called a serpent. Because God had created earth to have a human being on it and life that works their bodies, this part here, was made of the dirt of the earth. Now, it had originally all been immortal dirt and earth that would not die. Sickness and disease had not yet entered. It was around because Satan were going to learn he carried it within himself. He was a carrier, a bearer of the stuff. But he couldn't get it into the planet without man's permission. And he would have to have man disobey, rebel against the known, the word, the commands of God. A door would be opened... And Satan could spew and breathe in. Death would come in. Sickness would come in. Disease would come in. And rebellion and darkness, which means ignorance, would flood into this world and into the system of man. And a dark cloud would come. So what happens is this prophet Ezekiel is going to speak to the king of Tyrus. Now, God is talking to the human, to the human spirit. He's talking to the soul of the human spirit. And he's talking to Lucifer, who had become Satan. So let's listen. And we need to hear about our beginnings, his beginnings, the presence of God, before we really can understand why this presence is the spirit's life-sustaining environment that it needs to be in and then once we get that we'll be able to understand why in the kingdom of darkness the pattern is the same and pastor deborah had to learn this and i had to be able to see it when i'm dealing with people in and from the kingdom of darkness of all levels i had to be able to see the darkness in them But let's just listen to the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28, 11 through 18, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, Ezekiel, saying, 
verse 12. Son of man, that's the spirit inside of this dirt body called Ezekiel. Son of man inside there, you take up a lamentation, a cry, a warning upon the king of Tyrus, and you say unto him, that's what a prophet is supposed to do. You're supposed to go talk to these leaders and say some things. Because God is not talking to him. The king of darkness was inside this king of Tyrus. And that's who the words were really for. But at the same time, God wanted the spirit man to hear this. Okay, so we got a lot of ears listening. Thus says the Lord God, You, Lucifer, you sealed up the sump. You were full of wisdom, and you were perfect in beauty. That is how mankind started. That was the kingdom of heaven. He's telling us that the king of the kingdom of darkness, Satan, had been started as Lucifer, the light bearer, full of wisdom. He was sealed. He was perfected, fully grown. He had all knowledge, all wisdom. He was perfect, mature in his beauty. Wisdom will make you look beautiful. Wisdom and knowledge and the presence that you stay in will make you look glorious and beautiful. How come we all, we can see this when we look at beautiful Walt Disney princesses? They're young, they're beautiful, and the prince. Okay, But yet we see wicked witches, wicked queens, who are actually dragons behind the scenes because their heart was evil and wicked. But they could put on a front. They could put on a mask for sure. How many of you know people that put on masks, politicians, leaders, whoever, pastors, teachers, they put on a good front. But behind that mask is an evil, wicked dragon out of the kingdom of darkness. But yet you don't see them. So he's telling us, you started off good, beautiful. I put wisdom in you. I sealed you up. Verse 13, you, Lucifer, have been in Eden, the garden of God. That's the very presence, and we're going to learn about that, of God himself. You had been in my delight. You had been in my spiritual environment and atmosphere that you must be in. I put you there. I was happy with you there. I gave you everything you needed to be in that. I gave you a job, your identity. I gave you people and other angels to help you. I set you high up. One of the flaming cherubims, you were full of my fire of righteousness and holiness. I could speak through you. I could trust you. And you would let my glory and light and words and truth shine out of you without any interference. You were a true light bearer. You carried my light, my presence out. You shined it out. You did your job well. I was proud of you. I loved you. Not as a son, but as a high servant to me. You were beautiful course I created you that way but something happened and he goes you were in my presence you were in my Eden you were where I had delight in you I smiled when I looked at you every precious stone was your covering his whole body were stones and, and if you understand stones they sing when light shines through use a pyramid Okay, a crystal clear pyramid. You shine white light from the sun or anywhere, and out the other side will be the rays and the colors of the rainbow. And you put all these together in some kind of body. He was made up of everything. Beautiful creature. Beautiful. Can't even imagine what it looked like. Can't even imagine. The sardinus was part of your body. The topaz and the diamond. The barrel and the onyx and the jasper and the sapphire, 
the emerald, and the carbuncle and gold, the workmanship of your musical instruments, your tabarets, and of your pipes. They were prepared. I was going to speak through you, shine my light. You were going to carry my light, my truth. And music and sounds and light was going to come out. We sort of see that now. When you have your television or internet, digital light comes in. And in that digital light is images and sounds and colors flowing on light. Digital images. Microwaves. Okay, that was going in. So think about a microwave or a digital. I don't know what they use and all this stuff. Going into something, we use the television. It comes in and a picture shows up. Music and sounds. So in comes into Lucifer is this rays of light. that Out through him, who's like the TV. The pictures, the sound, the singing, the music, to shine brightly. And that's what Lucifer started as. Beautiful, gorgeous, right in that presence of God. He said that was prepared in you when you were created. Verse 14, you are the anointed cherub, the one that covers, you protect I've given you a shepherd's role, a warrior's role. You are to guard and protect if you need to. I want no defilement. I don't want any of your anybody disobeying, getting defiled, perverted. I gave you that purpose and identity as a guardian covering cherub. And I've set you so. This was my idea, my purpose. I'm the creator. I set you like this. You were upon the holy mountain, the high place for my throne, my palace, high up above even all of the rest of the kingdom. You were there. We might think of him as sort of a guard at the door, making sure that nobody comes in that shouldn't be coming in, maybe a secret servant, secret service uh, protector. He was to guard and protect the powerful presence of God. You have walked up and down in the middle, the very center, the mist of the stones of fire. You've been right there where life is created. You've watched it. I've let you walk. Now, when his vision, he got perverted. He remembered. I used to walk on stones of fire, so now... When you see a human being walking on coals of fire and they don't get burned, there is a demonic spirit in them trying to do this through the human body, trying to recapture that. Is what, that's what they did. They walked where life was coming up. They walked where the fire of God. They walked on those stones of fire. could also mean they walked where hell was, in Tartus and Hades, where the fire was coming up. They were there. Now, they weren't in it yet, but they were guarding it. That was already known. The lake of fire was already known. He was full of this wisdom. And they had authority to be there. And all of this was since the day he was created, until something happened. Something occurred. Iniquity, that means perverseness, twisting was found in you verse 16 oh excuse me verse 15 you were perfect much fully matured with all wisdom and knowledge in your ways how you were to act i gave you everything you needed to perform your job your duty that i created you to be O covering cherubim From the day that you were created. When he was born, he had his purpose, his identity. And he had wisdom and knowledge of what he was to do. Until iniquity was found in him. Something happened. How could that happen to such a beautiful creature? Why would that happen? Well, we have to learn. Because that beautiful creature 
became the king of kingdom of darkness. Out of this presence, but he had ancient memories. Verse 16, by the spiritual multitude, the many of your merchandise, your gifts, your blessings that I gave you, your glory, your wisdom and knowledge that I gave you. These are your goods, your beauty, the stuff I've created you with. They have, have filled you with violence and you have sinned. What happened? How could good things cause violence? How could good gifts form iniquity in somebody, which means perverseness, twisting. How could violence get created in this creature that was so beautiful and honored? Verse 16, Therefore I have found in you iniquity and violence. And we don't know how that got formed yet. We don't know how long it took. But we're fixing to learn a little more. Therefore, I, your Creator, the Lord Almighty, the Most High God, will spiritually cast, throw you out as profane, out of the mountain, out of the place of authority, the high place of worship of God, out of the kingdom of heaven. And I, your Creator, the Lord Almighty, the Most High God, will spiritually destroy you, O covering cherub, from the mist of the stones of fire. Ooh. Because of violence, which we don't know how it happened, iniquity that was not there at the beginning. And God taught me years ago, if I wanted to understand what happened to humanity, Pastor Deborah and everybody else, I was to go and study Lucifer becoming Satan. I was to look at his downfall. I was to look at his beginnings very closely because it would teach me patterns about myself from studying him and his fall. And I thought that's what I did. Why was this done? Verse 17. Your heart, your mind, Now, he doesn't have a normal physical body made of the earth. The earth wasn't even around at his creation. He has a body of jewels and diamonds and gold and fire and light. He has some sort of of body, a spiritual, eternal body. And he goes, your heart that's in there, your mind, was lifted up in pride. How? How? Why? Because of your beauty. What happened was he was so beautiful. He started going, wow, look at myself. Look at me, everybody. I'm the man of the hour. Look at my body. It's gorgeous. And he forgot he was created, who gave it to him. He forgot he was just created. These were gifts and blessings of the Creator. But his eyes became blind to his own light. And his heart, his thoughts, started lifting himself up instead of being humble and say, Thank you, Lord. I desire to serve you. He may have done that for who knows how long. But over time, Something happened. He said, you have spiritually corrupted your wisdom by the reason of your brightness. When you have great glory, you're the man or the woman of the hour, great position and power. Everybody's looking up to you. They think you got wisdom, which you probably do. But when you start looking at yourself, look at me, it's all about me, this is mine, this is my stuff, nobody can touch me, why do I have to stay here, why can't I move up? Something, your thoughts start changing. You start thinking different about yourself, who created you. So we're beginning to see 
more about the king of the kingdom of darkness. And like I said, I wanted to understand years ago, Pastor Deborah did, what happened to mankind? What is wrong with humanity? Why are we like the way we are? And God told me, study the fall, the beginning and the fall of Lucifer, who became Satan. And I would see these patterns, and this is exactly how it happened to humanity. So we were here, and what had happened was God had created this beautiful, beautiful cherubim, a flaming angel, a high-ranking archangel, one of the three. As I said, Gabriel was another, Michael was another, and Lucifer. And Lucifer meant the son of the morning, the son of the first age, not the son of God. And that's real important to know that. He was the be- one of the beginning angels. And if you understand, he probably was a pillar, a foundational uh, creature in the kingdom of heaven when he got created but something happened he was so beautiful and glorious and full and he started thinking it's me it's all about me i my light is mine and this is what's me making me beautiful he forgot that he was created he forgot that the light that was coming in was from somebody else He forgot that the sounds and the music of his stones of his body, it all came from the light that was not his, from somewhere else. And his stones of his body that reflected this, he didn't create. So he, iniquity, rebellion, sin, disobedience, violence towards his own creator, coveting, it's all about me. This is me. So what happened, Lord, the Lord is speaking from a prophet through a human being who has this king of the kingdom of darkness inside of him. God is speaking to the human about beware of your own, hey, when you get at leadership, presidents, prime ministers, business CEOs, husbands of a family, leadership, doesn't matter who you are. When you get put in a position and you start lifting your own brightness and glory up that it's all about me and I'm the one that did this, then you're in trouble just like Satan was or Lucifer was. And you will become an adversary in your own thoughts towards God, your creator. So what happened was he was becoming rebellious, independent, He was not giving God the glory that was due his creation and his name. He was taking it. He was stealing it and robbing it from God. That's not yours. I'm going to keep it for myself. All of your angels that I'm to pass through me, worship and praise, I'm going to keep it for myself because it's all about me. It would be like if you're the CEO and money's coming in, And you're to disperse it among all the people. And you're to give glory to the people that sent it. But you go, I'll keep it for myself. And I won't tell anybody. And you start corrupting your own thoughts. Whatever you do is for your own self or family. For your own lifting up. For your glory. And you just cutting it off from somebody else. So he goes... Because of this is happening, I can hear your thoughts. I can see the violence in there. I can hear the imaginations of your heart towards me, your creator, who put you in this very glorious presence. I can hear your violent thoughts towards me. I can hear you stealing my glory. I can hear you thinking about, desiring to be me, the king of the kingdom of heaven. He said, so I'm going to cast you to the ground below. And at that time, the earth was here. Just, you're going down, buddy. I'm going to cast you just as lightning. Boom. You're gone. I will lay you. I will show you and reveal you before all the kings. That means before all the humanity. If we're looking. 
so that they may behold you and see you and perceive you. Most people don't believe in Satan, that he's real. Even most people who believe in this word of God, they don't believe it. They think he's a funny guy with a red suit and a pitchfork and just not real. Verse 18, you have defiled your sanctuaries, the place where my presence, my voice, my sound, my wisdom is supposed to be ruling and reigning in you. Those are my sanctuaries, my temples that I created in you. And now you have defiled them. You brought in violence. You have brought, you have gone in and robbed and taken and kidnapped out of my sanctuaries, my glory and my beauty. You've taken it for yourself. By the multitude, the many of your iniquity, by your many different thoughts, by your many different intentions, I've seen your thoughts. Because we learn that as you think up here, so it is. So he goes, I've seen you go into my sanctuaries and you have stolen my goods. You have taken out my glory and you have claimed it for yourself. By the iniquity, the rebellion, the twisting and perverting of your traffic, you have taken it out and sold it to the highest bidder. You have taken out my glory and said, if you want this, you're going to have to pay your dues to me. If you want this from me, you're going to offer me homage and service and worship. You started trafficking, merchandising your blessings and glory to the other angels underneath. Hey, you want me to tell you what the God's saying? You got to pay me homage and worship. Got to bow down to me because I got something you want. So he started, he's just thinking this. But in the spirit realm, as you think, you're doing it. Thoughts are powerful living things. Everything is done by a thought, created by words, by thinking. So God says, I saw that. Now that's not how I created you in the beginning. But what the gifts I gave you, the opportunities, the blessings, you have perverted yourself. You've forgotten me. You have stepped out of my presence and honoring me, the giver, and you have said, I have created it. It's mine. No, honey, it ain't yours. Never was. It's just a gift. You're to manage it, to shepherd it, to guard it and protect And you didn't do that. You stole it from me. And then you sold it out to the highest bidder. For what? Praise. Worship to you. Bow down to you, O Lucifer. And we see that later. When a young man named Christ Jesus is being tempted by the very temptations that Satan, excuse me, that Lucifer had, he was tempted by the same thing. Now, that was just, this was just a revelation that just came. Because Satan went through the same test. He went through proving to other angels. Who, who says you're the cherubim, the high one? Prove it to us. Change something. Do some power. Because you, oh, you're hungry? You want something, Lucifer? Make something happen. Now, he te Satan tested Jesus in the wilderness when he was physically hungry to change a rock into bread. Well, how did Satan know about that that power was there? He was faced with that same test. Mm -hmm. Then the next test that Jesus Christ had that set Lucifer was tested with. Because when you are in a high place of power and in the presence of God, you will be tested on these three. And it's the lust of your appetites, your desires. What was the second test this Christ Jesus had? Hmm? What was the second one? The second, the second test that Christ Jesus was challenged with by Satan now 
was the same test that Lucifer went through. God had allowed Lucifer to rise up to the high place. And Lucifer knew inside of him that if he purposely did something that would cause him to stumble, to fall, he purposely did it, not by accident, but purposely did it, that he had this wisdom that God would save him. But what Satan did was he tested Christ. Jesus said, hey, let's go up. I'm going to take you spiritually to leave your physical body in the wilderness, taking your spirit up to the high temple, going to put you way up there. Now, jump. Prove that you are the Son of God. You got to do something to prove it. So Satan himself, who was Lucifer, was challenged by some of his underlings. Oh, you're really that... That high sheriff and prove it to us. Do something. We know God's got you under protection. We know that God will protect you and keep you. Go ahead. Well, Lucifer failed that test. But he knew about the test. So he challenged Christ Jesus in the wilderness. Third test. Every leader, every person is going to take it. Lucifer, who had now become Satan, says to Christ Jesus, takes him up to a high mountain. He said, look, I want you to look at all these cities and kingdoms, all their riches and their glory, their majesty and their tall buildings, their beautiful bridges and the land and the... You see all that? That's mine. That's mine here on earth. And I'll give it to you. And you can have it. If only you'll do one thing. You will bow down. Right here. Spiritually. And you will worship me and praise me as God and King. Now, Lucifer was challenged with that. Every time he went to the throne room, bow. Worship me. As the God, the creator, who owns all of the kingdom of heaven, all of its glory and majesty. Well, he probably did that for a while. But at some point, after failing the first, his heart says, I'm not going to bow. You can bow your knee, but not bow your heart. How many have ever been told to stand up and you stand up, but on the inside of you, you're sitting down. You ain't going to have anybody tell you what to do. But you stand up and you... On the inside. That is how Lucifer was. He didn't want to bow. He was offered so many blessings and the presence and the glory. And on the, he had started taking what was not his. He had start, started failing the test. Because even the angels will be tested. Everything. I'll tell you a quick story here. My first angel that was with me in going into the kingdom of darkness and reaching out to multi-generational Satanists, wonderful creature, his name was Samuel. I needed him to help me up in Chicago to help some young homeless kids do a lot of things in some buildings. And he did. He brought other angels. He came down. Then they got moved to, I think, Houston, Texas. And he stayed in physical form longer than he should have. And he and angels, as we know, even after Christ Jesus' resurrection, he could take on human form, but he's got a different kind of body. And he could eat and talk, and then he'd disappear. So this Samuel, this high angel, stayed with these groups of people too long. And he was tempted by the earthly women to have sex in that form, and he did. And he actually became a demon and had to be cast down into the pit. So even angels will be tempted, and so was this Lucifer. He was tempted... When there was not much on planet earth, maybe dinosaurs. But his heart, after you are given the powerful presence of God, his gifts and blessings, you will be tempted. 
tested and tried. Christ Jesus had to be tested. And in his test, he told the Satan out in the wilderness, I'm going to get those kingdoms back from you. You stole that glory, those people, from God. Now I'm going to get them back, but I'm going through the law. I'm going to get them back legally, and I'm not going to bow to you, O oh, fallen, fallen cherubim, a created creature. You yourself will bow, and you need to bow, and you need to worship the Lord your God. Satan had given that up, and he probably quit bowing in the presence of God. And in his heart, he is desiring to own the kingdom of heaven, its riches, its glory, all of its storehouses, all of its light and wisdom. All of this is happening on the inside of Lucifer. And his spirit and mind, he starts getting perverted and filled with violence and hate. He's becoming a thief and a robber just in his thoughts. And God wasn't going to have it. So even Lucifer took these three tests, failed them. So he knew about them, and he tests this young man, Christ Jesus, with the same test. Every human will take them. Whether you're just a child, a youth, a, a parent, a leader, a politician, an imam, a pastor, everyone is going to take them. Every angel is going to take him. Samuel, my first one, he failed. I actually watched him become a demon. And he was cast out of heaven into the sides of the pit where the other ones who had taken on human form and stayed in it and started having sex with the human women because they were beautiful. They wanted that pleasure of the to enjoy that because most the angels were not to have they don't have sex with each other they don't kiss each other they don't have those intimate relationships and become one with each other they were to maybe be guardians help us speak to us because we had no or in our early humanity we had no inside connection to god and he's trying to help us. And a lot of these early angels that fell with Satan, the one-third that his tail dragged down that were probably under him and bought into him stuff, they saw these earthly women. And they took on human form. And we know they can do that. I watched it with Samuel. If you read about Jesus after the resurrection and even before Jesus, we hear with Abraham, two angels and God came in human form up to Abraham's tent to talk with him about things. And they said they had come down for the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, the two angels that were with this God did not talk, but they were in human form as a human being, just travelers. Now, Abraham, you can see this if you watch Abraham and Sarah movies of Abraham on the visual movies, the Bibles. You'll read about it. And this God... Some people believe it was the incarnate Jesus Christ himself coming down, taking on a human form. It's kind of shrouded in the movies. Talking to Abraham and Sarah about a, that they were going to have a child. And then this God starts a conversation with Abraham, telling him what he's going to do. God, oh, down here on earth, God is not going to do anything without first consulting a human, telling a human what his plans are, taking counsel with him. Because back in Genesis, God says, let mankind rule and reign down here on earth. So God would come down or he'd speak to you 
to get your permission to talk with you. So in this conversation with Abraham, this incarnate probably was Christ Jesus in some human form with two angels, was talking about this city called Sodom and Gomorrah. And a cry had gone up. Now, we, the smoke, prayers, stench, cries that had gone all the way up, and God had heard it. So he sent his, probably, word down there to talk to Abraham about it. God didn't want to destroy the people. He had already done that once in a flood. He wanted to spare them. So he was going to have a conversation with Abraham. And if Abraham would say, Sir, would you please spare the people of the city if you could find just some righteous people? And so this conversation with Abraham and God went on for a little while, and Abraham kept saying, Well, if you find 30 or 20, maybe 10, you won't destroy the city. So God finally agreed in this human form, Sarah heard it, saw him. They fed him. Okay. So I knew about God coming down and manifesting himself. So in this conversation, God came down in some form with two angels. The angels didn't talk, but they continued on to Sodom and Gomorrah because God's interaction was not with the evil. He can't be around it. It was with humanity to try to have humanity intercede on behalf of other humans and to convince God, don't do this. But Abraham only stopped at 10. If he had gone down to one person or even none righteous and made a deal with God. So the angels in human form walked into the city of Gomorrah. Now, some people recognized, I believe Lot recognized they were messengers of the Lord, took them in. Other people just saw human beings, men, that were very beautiful and wanted to have sex with them. Because the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah, a lot of people believe it was homosexuality, but it wasn't. What had happened with Sodom and Gomorrah is that they had become so wealthy through trade and everything. They had gotten lazy. They had gotten prideful. They had got into gluttony and into homosexuality, given into all the less lust of their flesh. They did not work. They were prideful and arrogant. If you go back in another chapter, you will see that all of that, when a nation or a city becomes prosperous, just like Lucifer, and you have blessings and you have riches, you have to be careful because then you get lazy and you pervert yourself and you'll get off into everything and that homosexuality was just one Okay, of the many issues of Sodom and Gomorrah. So these two angels were in human form. And they go into the city and they stay with Lot and they talk to Lot. Now they go, who are these things that they are of God? Because Lot knew about this God of Abraham. And he recognized spiritually there was not a lot of conversation with him. But these angels were able to take on a form temporarily. To take care of the business. So what happened was that in this temptation with Christ Jesus, Lucifer who had become Satan and had his kingdom of darkness on earth was tempting Christ Jesus with the same test he took about bowing to the Lord his God where somewhere along the line Lucifer in his mind stopped doing that became violent, coveting of this God, his creator. So he knew the test. And he going to put this young Christ Jesus through him. So he could take on forms. And Pastor Deborah had that experience. Now she has 13 angels. There's another Samuel. I don't talk to them. They don't talk to me. Every once in a while I'll talk and just thank Samuel. But I don't see them. They do not show up in human form. 
only if they have to and they can't stay or they become as the other Samuel a demon and will be sent to the pit so let's get back to Lucifer God's telling him in verse 18 you've defiled your sanctuaries the places where I'm to be honored lifted up worshiped praised glorified that place in you, Lucifer, you've defiled it now with violence and envy, coveting the atmosphere, the presence in there. It's not me anymore. By the multitude, the many of your iniquities and your thoughts and your rebellion, your disobedience, by the iniquity of your traffic, you have sold everything to the highest bidder. Therefore will I bring forth a fire, a lust, a coveting, desires from the very center, the mist of your mind, out of you. And it, this fire, shall devour you. It will always be burning. You will always be coveting. You will always be hoping for, wishing, desiring, needing. And yet you will never be satisfied. And I will then, that will always be there. I will magnify your lust. You see that here with humans. They can't ever get enough. They keep wanting more, more. I'm not happy with this. I want more money, more money, more possessions, more money. I want more beauty, more sex, more. I want to eat more, doesn't matter. More lust, coveting. It's like a fire burning. I have a great thing I'll try to, in another section, I'll bring it in called lust. Came when I was watching about earthly fires and firefighters. It's excellent. It says, and I'm going to throw you down there and you're going to burn up in ashes on the earth. Right in the sight of all humanity that behold you. But you, did you hear that? First, you have to see that there is a Satan, a king of the kingdom of darkness. Then once you get that, they'll see the real you. Pastor Deborah got it. Lucifer was a spiritually created being called a cherubim. He had a high place in God's kingdom. His spiritual job was to cover, protect, and keep the presence of of God safe or wherever it was to go probably even here on planet earth because Satan knew that that what he was going to do that so he was probably supposed to be a guardian of earth a protector of earth and protect the presence down there probably protect the garden where we're at he was probably supposed to have been that flaming sword out there and that cherubim protecting the garden don't know, but could be. He was in the very presence, which we hadn't even got to yet. We'll get that on the, the next one, probably part 12. In the very presence of this holy king. Well, if the presence came down to earth, which Satan saw, the Garden of Eden, and he knew it was a place on earth, he was probably supposed to have been a protector of it until it could spread out over all the earth. He was one of the three high ark angels, the high cherubim. He, he, had, he was like one of the world's greatest leaders, the top CEO of a major company, an international uh, owner of a bank. He was a powerful, powerful spirit, a high archangel one of the top dogs of the kingdom of heaven. This was where he was created to be, to live and serve the Almighty. In God's presence, I bet you, he was to come down to earth, protect the earth, help us, be a helpmate to us, because uh, humanity was going to be a mess. But I bet you he knew that. I bet you that was his assignment. I even out into the far reaches of the galaxy. But that didn't happen. He was anointed to perform the work God designed and created him to do. He had all the tools. He had the body. 
He had originally everything, the wisdom, the knowledge to do his work, his purpose. He had great beauty and was in the Garden of Eden, the very presence and delight of God. He knew God face to face. He knew about the judge of the universe, the books, the law. He knew the throne room. He knew the council seat where he sat with the three archangels. He knew God's plans. He was a part of the heavenly government of the kingdom of heaven. He knew how it operated in heaven. He knew the honor and the glory that was to be given to this God, this creator, this king, this majesty, this king of the kingdom of God. He knew. He was there. He was a part of it. But he started looking at his own brightness, his own beauty himself. And he saw this shining beauty and light, his glorious position that he had been created for and how important he was. And he said to himself his own thoughts in his own heart and mind, quietly, just to himself, he began. And then it started flowing out. He goes, look at me. I am so beautiful. I am so glorious. I am so wise. I am so powerful. Don't mess with me. I am a God myself. I am a Lord. I'm owner of all that I have. I'm going to rule over the earth for this God. I am Lord and Master. And I don't serve anybody. We hear that from old Sauron. We hear that from a lot of people. We ain't going to serve anybody. We ain't going to serve the constitution of any nation. We aren't going to serve the people. We're going to serve our desires. We're going to serve our desires to be Lord and owner and king and glorious. And we're going to steal and take everything we can. That's corruption. The heart becomes corrupt. The mind, the thoughts, the desire, all corrupt, twisted and perverted. He gave himself the credit for who he was and what he had not given to God, who was his creator. He stole. He was a thief to God. It's all about me. I made myself. I am not going to bow to you. I deserve to be up there. But he had become the Lord of his own heart. And he went into his own heart, his sanctuaries, and put new thoughts there. I'm the great king. Look at me. He kicked out God in his heart. He started worshiping himself. He started looking at himself as king and Lord. And then he starts desiring. Then He wanted to have all that this God, his creator, had. For he had now was way past serving him, being humble in spirit, being a servant to the whole kingdom of heaven. Now he was just coveting. I want your position. I deserve that because I am the man. He started coveting, lusting for things of another. How many people we said, I want money. I want your land. I want the land's resources. And they'll lie. I want the presidency. I want the prime minister. They'll lie, cheat, and steal. They'll corrupt the system. They'll do anything to get what they want. And nothing will stand in their way. And even to sit in God's place of authority and dominion of the kingdom of heaven. All of this was going on inside of Lucifer's heart, his mind. Things were getting changed in there. The wisdom becoming perverted. His thoughts were becoming violent and hateful towards this God. Jealous, coveting. But probably on the outside, you wouldn't know it. Not yet. He wanted to receive all the worship. That was to go to his creator and God. That's why he was beautiful. He deserved to keep some of it. He probably did. And he'd send a little bit on to God. 
just enough to make, he thought, God happy, and he'd keep some for himself. And all it is, it's done through thoughts, like, wow, thank you. And you go, yeah, you're right, I'm so cool, thank you. I appreciate you serving me. I appreciate you recognizing that I'm the man. Thank you for this award. Thank you. It's all about me. So then what happened? Now, this is all going on on the inside of Lucifer. He's becoming this Satan, though, this adversary of God. Inside, the thoughts are perverting and twisting. He's becoming rebellious and sinful, defiled himself. And he probably knew it but didn't know it. The presence of God was lifting and moving out. He probably couldn't even see it. I'm not sure what he was going to do with the Lord if he did the mutiny and took over the spot. I don't think he could think that far. What was he going to do with the Holy Spirit and the Word? Where was he going to put them? Was he going to send them to the lake of fire? Put them in a pit somewhere? Chain them up? I don't think he got that far because a lot of people don't. They don't think. They just go, I want. I need. I have to be there. I have to satisfy my desires, my coveting. So I don't think he thought very far ahead. Was he going to put them in hell? Did he know about hell? I don't know. Was he going to throw them in the lake of fire? What was he going to do with them? You know, it was the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, but this guy was big. How was he going to dislodge him? I don't know if he got that far. He's just going to do it, I guess. Maybe he was going to use the one-third of the angels that were under his supervision and authority to help him. Lucifer, the bright and shining one, an archangel, the son of the morning, the first age, one of great beauty, the anointed cherubim, wanted to sit in the place of all authority and dominion, the mountain of God. He wanted to be the master who served no one. He got tired of serving this God. He got tired of being told what to do. He got tired of sending all the glory and the honor to this God. Now, he was beautiful. He wanted some for himself. He started coveting what was not his to have. He wanted to be as this God and receive all glory, worship and honor, have all the goodies, live in the house, live in the castle, sit on the throne, and have all of the kingdom of heaven worship him. He became prideful. That comes first. Then he became greedy. Oh, I want it all. I want to break that glass ceiling. I want to sit there. Hey, I'm going to be the first cherubim to sit on the throne. We've had enough of this guy, of his rules, of his way. We've had enough. I'm a beautiful, fiery, high arcing. It's my turn. My turn now. I've been in line. I've been waiting. He needs to move over. He's an old thing. Listen. To the story of Lucifer's fall from heaven. We've been talking about it. From grace and from the presence of God. Now I'm not going to go into that on this tape. What I'm trying to show you is Satan's beginning in the presence of God. And how the presence of God was his life-sustaining force that kept him spiritually beautiful glorious and how it started changing now he fell he got cast down as lightning he becomes just an ick we know that if you know that but in this video and this part we wanted to start showing you that even in the presence of god where you get started mankind did adam in the garden of eden with the presence and a beautiful relationship and you can get kicked out and when lucifer got kicked out he went through some issues at first mad and rebellious him and his one-third of his angels just went bonkers on earth 
and just corrupted all of mankind after they, after he went in a serpent, went into the garden and tested and tried the helpmate and Adam with the same three tests. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the lust of the appetites. And obedience to God. They failed just as he did. He got them, he took them, and he said, Okay, I'm going to take them and create my kingdom of darkness down here. I'm stuck here. Now I'll go up and I'll create a second heaven and build my my headquarters. But down here around this earth, I will put the government of the kingdom of darkness, which was supposed to be the kingdom of heaven and God, influencing being here in the hearts, the minds, and the spirits of humanity. Got the pattern. I will go in there. I will put my demons inside of there, the sanctuaries where God is supposed to be. And I will sit there with my things. My kingdom will be inside of them. Instead of one of love, joy, and peace, and God's presence, which we're going to do on the next video, I'll put my heart, hate, violence, jealousy, greed, coveting. I will hate all life. Murder, killing, violent will be their spiritual image coming out through the soul and the physical body. And I will rule them as the kingdom of heaven was supposed to. And I will rule them through darkness, ignorance. They will have no idea who they really were supposed to be and what they were supposed to do. They won't even know that I even exist. I will make sure they just think I'm a fairy tale, a fable, not real. I'll keep them in darkness and ignorance of their flesh their lust of the eyes, their flesh, their coveting, their desires of sex and ignorance. I'll get my worship through many different ways, many different religions. So this is what the kingdom of darkness has slowly developed. After the flood, they had to start over because they just went nuts. With animals and humanity, they were so happy to be out. They could finally do anything they wanted to, and they did. And it got so evil that all flesh had corrupted itself. And God said, I have to wipe this earth clean. And he did. Started over. But man was still disconnected and still a flesh creature. So Satan had to go, well, that didn't work. Ooh, okay, we're going to get organized. I wanted a kingdom, we're going to start organizing it. I need a king, I need to be able to come inside of him. I need my man that I work through, build towers and temples. and Okay, so they got started. <clears throat> and now we're dealing with it many thousands, I don't know how many thousands of years later. We're dealing with the kingdom of darkness. But it's inside of here. It's inside the spirit of man. It's in the soul. And it's here. And what I wanted to let you know is we study these patterns. We study this presence. And then on the next tape, or video, or part, I'm going to go into deep into what this presence of God was. So you can see Satan knew it as Lucifer. And he develops the same presence in us who are living in his kingdom of darkness. Because you have to understand that. And it will help you to understand why people do what they do. So let's end here with prayer. Dear Father, all those that are watching this that have come here today. That desire to be out of the presence of the kingdom of darkness. And they want the sanctuaries inside their spirit. And the holy of holies to be cleansed and purified of the king and his kingdom of darkness in them. I ask that you fulfill Isaiah 61 and 62 in their lives spiritually, and that you apply the victory of the cross to their lives, and you cleanse the temple, and you bring forth that new creature out of death and out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of spirit and life, the kingdom of heaven, bring forth new life out of death. 
Father, only you could do that. Father, help them to come to you, back into your presence, back into your kingdom, out of the kingdom of darkness. Cleanse, purify, and make new your sanctuaries, your temples inside of them, in their spirit. Bring forth out of the death of their soul to the old kingdom of darkness, a new and renewed soul, a submitted helpmate to the spirit, taking its rightful place as the tail to the spirit and to the word of God and to you. Help the spirit to rise up as a king of the kingdom of heaven, a ruler over the soul and the physical body. Help them, Father. We have a lot of work to do, as you know. And Father, help their spirits to believe in these words and to desire your presence above all things. Make your presence known to them. Make them to see that they have been living in another kingdom, the kingdom of darkness through ignorance, through their fallen nature. And they have been worshiping and serving that king, Satan, unknown to them, and help them to know that you desire them back in your kingdom of heaven, that they may worship and serve you, your Son, and the Holy Spirit through the Spirit and in truth. In the name of Christ Jesus, we thank you. All right, everybody, go home, take lots of notes, think about this, study, ponder, write down a lot of questions. You can send them to me. Ask God any questions you want. He's there to answer you. If your heart desires this, change from one kingdom to another. A cleansing of the sanctuaries and temples inside here. The enemy will respond. But Pastor Deborah has already given the angels their go. And they will be there to protect you. Even in your dreams, your visions. When the flashbacks start coming of torture and abuse. They'll be stopped before they get there. You will stand back and see the power of the kingdom of heaven and of God's influence inside of you to defeat the king of the kingdom of darkness. You must believe that you have help. You're not alone. And his love will shine out and reach and touch you because that is what we're doing. All right. This was part 11. I didn't get very far, but we got a lot. We'll pick up again on part 12 of the kingdom of darkness as we're working through it, studying it, studying the kingdom, the patterns, and how this kingdom of darkness is here on earth and its king, Satan, rules in our hearts and our minds and our spirits and rules governments and leaders and politicians and banks and everything else, systems, and how we have to become aware of it and we have to know that it's here. So when you're looking at any situation, ask yourself, who and what is really going on? Just as God was speaking to the king of Tyrus, he was speaking through it. Look beyond what you see with your natural eyes. And is the kingdom of darkness at work and ruling and reigning? Is the king and his demonics at work? Is love, joy, and peace at work? Or is there corruption and lies and theft and thievery? What? Ask questions. Seek. Seek. Look beyond the natural what you see. Some people know and they don't want to talk about it. Some people are ignorant because they have bowed their knee to serve the kingdom of darkness. And they are afraid or they've gotten paid off with money. Their hearts are corrupt and they are the guard and they are protecting what the king of the kingdom of darkness is trying to do. Down here, there is always war between the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of darkness, between righteousness and evil, between what's light and what's dark, what's good and what's evil. There's always a war, and it's going on in here, and it's played out in the world. Look, ask God, what is going on? Who's behind this? What's the plans? Is this a war, a battle? What's going on? He'll help you. 
because he wants you to be aware of the kingdom of darkness, the king, its plots and plans, its wars, so you can pray to him for help. And you will know, you will no longer be in darkness and ignorance that's been ruling you. Okay. Love, Pastor Deborah. See you on the next one, part 12 of the Kingdom of Darkness. And this is Pastor Deborah signing off so I can go and get this ready. Love you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Everybody get home safe. Yes, the angels will help you. Yes. And if you're in your dreams, you'll wake up safely. And you might feel strange, but that's okay. Love, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for listening and watching this video. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you stopped by today and watch. This is Pastor Deborah, and I hope you come again and watch many, many more videos and learn and grow spiritually. And hear how she has helped people spiritually, the Lord's way, for many, many years. Come again, watch another one. And we welcome you to be a subscriber to the channel, to make comments, and if you wish to contact Pastor Deborah, please email her at her email address for the ministry at Pastor Deborah at Agape Love is here dot org. You can also see these videos on Twitter and on the website in the many different sections that they are put into. Enjoy, and it was once again an honor to have you watch and listen. Thank you, and come again to another video of Agape Love, Love is Here Ministries, a ministry of helping people the Lord's way that Pastor Deborah has been doing for many, many years. Love always and forever, Pastor Deborah.